Matt Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. Welcome to it. Great to have you with it, with us. I am uh, Pat Gray. My preferred pronouns, if you're wondering, are it, someone, and whomever. Just pl- please try to keep that in mind. Hang on a second. Are we going to have to write this down? Yeah, if it, can't it, remember. Yeah. Someone, someone and whomever. 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 My preferred conjunctions are <laughs> Wait, or, no. so, or so, uh, and and. Or so and and. Yeah. I'm and a fan of so. My Wait, well, yeah. preferred adjectives. How many post-it notes do I need? Are beautiful. Beautiful. Be- as in, it's beautiful. Great. Beautiful, and great. Stupendous. <laughs> stupendous. I share them with uh, Donald Trump. So oh, Great. Just in case you're wondering. All right. Okay. As in, that was a stupendous game over the weekend, the Holy War in Provo, Utah. That was fun. Which reminds me, we got this uh, tweet from uh, from Jack Hole Puddin, <laughs> obviously a Cougar fan. I know there's a lot going on, but dang, I've been waiting 12 years, and I want my Pat Gray BYU celebration song. And so you <laughs> shall have it, my friend. <laughs> we beat the godless animals. The street and just mind games and take their anuses. We crush the youths on Saturday. It's a fact, no matter what they say, the world makes sense again today. Take that, you animals, you godless animals. All right, there you go. Wow, that was a good job by someone. Somebody, Some, someone over there. Mm-hmm. It's fantastic. It was a fun game to watch. Oh, did you watch it? Yeah, heck yeah. You stayed up late enough heck to see that yeah. thing? Yeah. Good, Have good, to, good, man. Good. Kick yeah. their anuses. That was huge. Can we kick Especially their anuses? after, you know, Missouri lost, so I was like, well, somebody's got to yeah, win Yeah, that today. sucked. Missouri lost. Kentucky it. beat yeah. them? Yeah. How bad was it? Kentucky looked good. Well, they only lost by 10 points, but it felt oh, like... A lot more? A lot more. Did it really? Yeah. Felt like a lot more. Nebraska beat Mighty Buffalo. They did. They did. Uh, Not the Buffalo Bills. Sadly, no. It was a no. University of Buffalo. People no. Were like, wait, there's a university in Buffalo? Yeah. Huh. It was uh, 28-3. It was really more like 49-3. to But uh, Oh. Yeah. How was it more like 49-3 to when it was 28-3? to Well, um, they had three <laughs> touchdowns called back on penalties. Oh, they did. Uh, two of them were absolute right. garbage calls. Okay. Uh, one. Eh. One. Eh. So anyway, this week they got Oklahoma. Oh, they're no. not going to be able to fake their way out in, of that in one. In Norman. Mm-hmm. I think they'll keep it close for about maybe. two, two and a half quarters, maybe. You know, They'll you probably think? lose by... Yeah, I do. Their defense is ab- absolutely underrated. I uh, was going to say the first two minutes will probably be close. No, no, I think you'll be surprised. <laughs> I think they will lose <laughs> really? by a couple okay, touchdowns, good. but I think it'll be huh. competitive. Uh, Luke right. Reimer, uh, I know you know Luke Reimer. He oh, is the uh, stalwart of the defense. Luke Reimer. <clears throat> well, yeah. if you'd allow me to tell you, uh, his I'm sister you. is a big fan of this program. Really? And oh, that's uh, great. Yeah, and he is definitely the the best player on our defense. So I it's love just really Luke cool Reimer. to have that connection. And his sister. Yeah. So you need to you be know watching what the whole for damn Reimer family. I love them. Great. Yeah. I great. love them. I really do. Yeah. Now I'm telling you, they'll keep it close. Okay. So uh, who does Nebraska have this weekend? We just talked about Oklahoma. Oklahoma, duh. <laughs> right, right. I mean, we're just deeply into it. <laughs> and Missouri plays. I don't I mean, we, it's going to be tough. It's Southeast Missouri State. Uh, <laughs> you can throw out all oh, the record man. books throw out... in that rivalry yeah. between Missouri and, and Southeast East Missouri State. Yeah, you don't don't mess no, with that. I mean, we've shipped but Southeast Missouri has shipped in players from, you know. Wyoming. No. So I think no, so. No, they've yeah. got Wyoming transfers so. on the team? I don't oh, know. my. I don't know if they do. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably do, yeah. Uh, so but uh, BYU plays Arizona State. Yeah. Chance to go 3 and 0. If they go 3 and 0, they'll probably be 5 and 0 when they go to play. I think it's Baylor. Yeah. Uh, and they should game. be they should be ranked higher than 23rd. Yes, the they should. Uh, they've got there's two teams ranked above them that are 1 and 1. That's bull crap. And that's just the old school of those teams are already in the top 25. Yes. And it takes forever to get rid of because nobody wants to admit they were wrong. Right. I hate that so yeah. much. Well, and usually it's the automatic top 25 teams like Texas, who's never good, but they're always ranked and how in the about, preseason. And how about Texas this past weekend? Got blown out. out by Arkansas. Arkansas we looked like come, Alabama We want to come playing. to the SEC. Yeah. We, it'll be uh-huh. fun. Will it? Right. Will it? Will it? 
Right, little taste of yeah, welcome. Thing, well, you aren't lying, welcome. Welcome to the SEC. That, that's exactly what that was, that, well, that, That's what Twitter was saying on that's Saturday. Right. I mean, yeah, you man. can't even get by Arkansas? Good Wait till luck. they lose to Vanderbilt, and they'll be like, why, why did we come to this league again? What are we doing here? What, who had this idea? Come to the SEC, it'll be fun, they say. <laughs> You'll make a lot of money, they uh, say. Yeah. And they probably will, yes. but they already make a... Right. I mean, they're already the richest program in America. It just It seems like a silly move, but okay. Yeah, I don't get it. What was wrong with the Big 12? I, I don't know. I mean, I'm glad they left, because that created a little room for somebody else. Really? Yeah. Who's yeah. Who else? Yeah. Uh, um, Brigham Young University? Oh, yeah. yeah. That independent team from yeah, Utah. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah, that's great. How I wish we could have played the Utes last year. Oh, my gosh. We would have destroyed them last year. Yes. Beat them this year, but we would have crushed them with yeah. Zach and everybody we lost to the NFL. Uh, all right. 888 California recall. Mm-hmm. Not quite the celebratory situation uh, that the BYU uh. game was. Uh, Gavin Newsom projected to win, and he's probably going to win big. I mean, they still don't. I don't know. They're counting the ballots by hand. Is that what they're doing? Guess, yeah. You know, that, that's, that's interesting you said that because, you know, when we were younger, it was paper ballots and mm-hmm. we had the results instantly, right? Now we use high tech computers, supposed yeah. to streamline it, make it faster, and we wait for no, we don't know. days and weeks. And, oh, my goodness. I guess it takes a while when you're. Yeah. How is it possible we don't know computers. the results? Mm-hmm. It's I, a yes or no. <laughs> How hard is it to count that and move on? There are some saying he's going to win by uh, two to one margin. Yeah. Gah. Yeah. And earlier, he was in such peril. I mean, it looked like a foregone conclusion. He was going to lose and have to face a recall election. He brought in the big guns, though. Yeah. You know, he brought in Biden and Kamala. And you know what they did? They all loved his little butt. They decided Trump was back in office and they right. and they played him. Just beat up Trump. And people he, responded He did to that. last night in his little... Uh, winning speech, you know, is oh, mm-hmm. California uh, had a mandate, what's and the, he did his Trump thing again. Geez. What what what's the quote? Uh, there's a quote there. Uh, is uh, there. I think it's right in front of you on your computer. Trumpism is not dead. Oh, is that what you're talking about? No, the, the what, tell me the democracy one about uh, it's a vase. I thought you'd oh. love this quote. Democracy is not a football. You don't just throw it around. <laughs> it's more like I don't know an antique vase. <laughs> What a loser. <laughs> Thank you, Gavin. That was wow, wow that was powerful. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, it's like an antique vase. So we have sixty seven percent of the votes have been counted. Okay. Because sixty seven percent. Like you know, like I said, it takes forever now. It's uh sixty four to thirty six. Oh yeah. <clears throat> that he's Oof. winning. That's not good. So, Is yeah. Orange County part of the sixty seven percent? Oh, that's a great question. Because Orange County could bring that back a little bit. A uh, little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Little bit. Uh, uh, if they include, include <laughs> Joala bad, um, it'd be faster. <clears throat> uh, NBC Night Oil News. No idea. We don't know if it includes uh, no. I'm looking Orange it up County as, we, as we speak here. Uh, but, uh, this Calif- is why it takes so long. Californians, because their state has just become a pit. Um, and an expensive pit in which to live. I mean, what's not to love about the yearly fires that burn down half mm-hmm. the state? Uh, the cost of living in the state where you can buy a one-bedroom house that's about 12 square feet for $38 million. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's got a view. It has a view. That's a knockdown. Uh, $38 million, that's a knockdown. Yeah. We're going to knock it down and build a new one. <laughs> yes. Uh, what's not to love about the high taxes, mm-hmm. all of that stuff. And so everybody's leaving. And then they vote not to recall the guy who's responsible for some of it. At least. You know, the blackouts, mm-hmm. brownouts. Yes. The drought. Oh, my God. It's a beautiful place. Jeez. Why wouldn't you want to be there? Uh, unbelievable. So Californians are escaping and leaving the, the, the state that they can't afford to live in. It's that bad. And then they go to their new state and try to change it into what California is. (laughs) And the reason they left. 
It, it doesn't make any no. sense to me. Stay put, y'all. Stay put. Stay where you are if you're going to do that. I mean, we welcome you with open arms if you're reasonable and you love freedom and you don't want to force high taxes onto everybody. And, and it's obviously the way you want it. And you just you just reassured that it was going to stay that way. Right. So yeah. uh, stay, stay right. put. And stay I, there. And I have to report that uh, 100% of precincts in Orange County oh, have reported. Dang. <laughs> and they're down by double. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Hmm. Two to one. Mm-hmm. Uh, so some guy in the, in the story recently said he moved from California to Vegas. He said, we saw about a 28% reduction in our overall cost just mm-hmm. by moving here. So that for us was really something to consider and everything else is just icing on the cake. Huh? Well, nearly 3.3 million have left the golden state between, uh, 15 and 19, 3.3 million. Mm. Uh, in fact, it was it last year, more people left than, than moved in. So, for the first time ever. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, first time ever. The top destination, of course, mm. Texas. Hey, of course. Texas. Then you got your Arizona, Nevada, Washington State, Oregon, Colorado, and Florida. And you can see the influence of these people in each of those states. Well, here's the big issue for us specifically, is on our side of town... They moved the headquarters for Charles Schwab from San Francisco to literally yeah, right, our backyard. Right road. And you're going to see local politics on our side of the Metroplex swing to the left mm. real soon because they move. It's a campus, man. It is. Really? It's a, oh, it's a, yeah, it's, huge. It's, it's, have you not seen it? I don't think so. It's a, it's a huge know. campus with multiple buildings, a hotel for employees that are visiting to stay, a parking oh, wow. garage. It's right there it's where 114, 114 and 170 meet. And it's just a oh. used to be cows and mm. a field, and now yeah, it's yeah, yeah. a little San Francisco has yeah, moved I in. Certainly know the area. I don't know that I knew it was Charles Get over there. Swab. Yeah, get over there, and you will see. Huh. You'll be stunned. So you got that. You got Amazon that just is building some oh. big, massive where they got eleven thousand employees uh, that are that they're able to bring in eleven thousand. So. Maybe you hire from in here, I hope, in the Metroplex, or maybe that's a lot of Californians coming in again. I don't know. It's uh, it's agonizing. All they did, really is, is. all they had to do, is promise the jobs. Though they didn't have to promise, you know, that they were going to hire from mm-hmm. specifically Texas. So right, I mean, great I guess point. If it's someone point. moved from mm-hmm. California to Texas, that's technically hiring from. Well, Texas, they've already ruined Plano with really. these headquarters. Uh, so many large companies that have moved in there. So oh, I mean, look at I mean, Austin is. Nightmare. Always has been, though. Plano hasn't yeah. been. Plano's been great. Uh, but, yeah, it, it it doesn't make any sense because you left all this stuff yeah. behind, and that's why you left. And now you want to do the same thing here. How does that make any sense you know, to them? You know what would be a good state and not Texas because Texas sucks. Mm-hmm. If you're going to move from California, the place to move is Oklahoma. <laughs> uh, man, that's a, yeah. great, that's a great place. That's, that's where you yeah. want to live yes. is Oklahoma. No, even better. What about New York. Uh-huh. <laughs> what if you moved across, all the way across the country? Right? Try something completely different. Brand move new. to New York. New Try it there. There's plenty of office yeah. space. Yeah. There's <laughs> plenty. Plenty. Also, there's a place called uh, Massachusetts. Oh, yeah. That yeah. you might want to check into. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> and you won't, you won't have to change their politics there. They are They're already like-minded. Right yeah, they'll love you. They will absolutely love you and welcome you with open arms. Mm-hmm. According to the Washington Post, uh, Texas wanted to be the tech haven of the U.S. Its new abortion bill and other measures are causing workers to rethink their move. Oh, no. Good. (laughs) Good. (laughs) Then let's do another abortion bill. Yeah. All right, and make it more stringent. I like your idea of let's pass a law that says you have to drill for oil in, like, what, every neighborhood? Yes. Every neighborhood has to have a a fracking going on. That'll keep them out. (laughs) It would. It would. And what if we just said, you know what? Uh, You can't ever abort a baby. I don't care how old the baby is. There's no abortion, period. Not just six weeks when the heartbeat begins. Never. (laughs) And you can frack in in your backyard. Uh, And so can ExxonMobil. In (laughs) fact, uh, we're going to elect the uh, CEO of ExxonMobil to be the governor of our state. And he's going to make those decisions for all energy considerations. How about that? Mm. Tech workers are marking Texas off the list of places they'd consider working after the state passed the abortion law. Darn. Oh, wow. Shoot. Wow. 
On September 3rd, just two days after Texas banned abortions, uh, Vivek Baskaran, the chief executive of an Austin-based online survey software company, quickly assembled the handful of female employees that are based in the city. <laughs> okay. Okay. So then, in a virtual town hall... Oh, no. ...that lasted about 15 minutes, he told the women that regardless of insurance, the company would cover out-of-state abortion services for yeah, them. Yeah, that's good. Good for you. Okay. Right? That's fine. Do that if you want. Yeah. Whatever. I don't care. Uh, I'm not a politician. I can't change anything. But I'm still responsible for my employees in Texas. And I have a moral responsibility <laughs> to kill their babies. Yeah. <laughs> In wait, quote? Yeah, no. Um, oh, wait. No. I, this is, this I is mean, sales it force? Just, it was mostly what he Sorry, said. Sorry, I know. The, 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 you know, I paraphrased uh, a little bit at the end. The font size was kind of uh, right. small, and you had to add lid. And I didn't want to squint. <laughs> yeah. This is sales force, right? Yeah. Yeah, because the, the one uh, lady who is in charge of the uh, dating sites... Mm -hmm. uh, that's based here in Dallas. She's saying that she'll pay for everybody. To oh get no, their this is the CEO too. of Question Pro. Oh, okay. So this is still okay, another still place. another company. Yeah. yeah. For the past several years, Texas has been selling itself as a tech haven, uh, attracting startups and tech companies such as Oracle, Hewlett Packard, and even Elon Musk, Tesla's billionaire co-founder, uh, of course. Uh, big tech companies such as Facebook, Amazon, and Apple all have grown their presence in the state, opening new warehouses, data centers, mm -hmm. production facilities. But Texas's recent swerve to the right oh, on no. abortion. <laughs> voting, rest voting restrictions. I, uh, is this good stuff? I can't. You like it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> what was your first hint that I like it so much? Uh, I mean, just to, the <laughs> yeah. fact that you would stop mid-sentence to, to point it out shows how much you love it. Voting restrictions. Isn't that amazing? It sure is. <sighs> We extended the hours. We added right. days. Uh, hold on. So, so in, in the left's view, voting integrity is voting restrictions, and also mm -hmm. murdering babies is reproductive health services. Yes, no, nothing's being reproduced if you're <laughs> killing correct. the kid, man. Uh, it's all about language, you know. Uh, and they win that battle every single yes, time because we allow it. Uh, that's got to stop. All right. Uh, I don't need to tell you that Biden and Pelosi are raiding the government coffers between the infrastructure bill, stimulus checks, and unemployment benefits. The Fed is printing trillions of dollars overnight. In fact, 40% of all U.S. dollars ever, ever printed were created, get this, were created in the last 12 months. What was that? 40%. Of all U.S. dollars ever printed, ever printed, have been created in the last twelve months. That's it, though. Just the forty percent. Yeah, it's not a hundred percent. So yeah. oh, stop your belly. Aching. I mean, we haven't turned those printing machines. Oh off. my gosh, that's amazing. And we're already feeling the effect. Inflation rising at the fastest pace since two thousand eight. Doesn't take a hedge fund guru to understand the economy is headed toward disaster. So, how are professional investors preparing for this nightmare? Here's a spoiler alert. They already have. They've prepared. They turn to an under-the-radar asset class where prices have more than doubled S&P returns between 95 and 2020. It's a real physical asset that isn't gold or real estate or anything related to crypto. And for the first time ever, everyday investors can allocate towards this $6 trillion asset class. It's no longer exclusive to the ultra-wealthy. Thanks to one revolutionary startup, more than 200,000 members have already signed up, and their wait list keeps getting longer. Uh, lucky for you, they hooked me up with a special link uh, to skip it. Just head to masterworks.io slash unleashed. So it's a little bit different. Masterworks.io slash unleashed. Previous uh, offers have sold out in hours, so... Don't wait around to do this. See important disclosures at masterworks.io slash disclaimer. And masterworks.io slash unleashed. Go there today. This is Pat Gray Unleashed. That 40% number might be the most interesting stat ever contained in a commercial. God. <laughs> That's amazing. 40% yeah. of all U.S. dollars ever created 
have been printed out in the last 12 months. I just fact-checked that. That's accurate. That's <laughs> that's a horrific. Myth. That's insanity! Why is there inflation? <laughs> How did it get so high now? It's 5.3%. Yeah, that that's child's play compared oh, yeah. to what it will be. When this catches up to us, and they're doing a good job of delaying the inevitable, but that's all they're doing. So when it does catch up to us, I think 5.3% inflation would be a dream come true for us. Uh, it's going to be more like 40% or yeah. 50%. I think I heard over there's over $300 trillion worth of debt in the world among governments total hmm. combined. Mm-hmm. $300 that's, trillion? That's why we just it just needs to go just make everything zero again. Zero to all Zero out. Zero to all out. Oh, a little jubilee our, time, huh? Default, default on all our debt. All okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Everybody, everything just goes to zero. I think that'd go really well. Start again. So does that mean mm-hmm. I don't have any I, more car payments? Correct. Okay, I'm in. It's all zero. Everything's <laughs> gone. Really? Just start again. My house payment, I don't need to bother what, with it? What you have right now is zero. Okay. <laughs> all right. All of it. Wow. I like that. That gonna, sounds I'm like... I'm going to run on that. that mm-hmm. That's a recipe for a stable society, Jeffy. Is it it, though? <laughs> Trying to be happy with this, too. Oh. <laughs> Hey, you know that two trillion dollars we owe you? Yeah, we're done. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, we're not paying you. It's called a, it's called financial amnesty, China. Get on board. <laughs> you got a problem with that? Go take it up with Taiwan. See, it's all about language. Let's just start calling it financial amnesty. All right. And then in a couple of years, it'll have enough traction that uh, everyone will be on board. Oh, they're going to be on board. I like it. I like it. Mm-hmm. Hey, one of our listeners uh, sent us this. It's. Goes by five times August. Yeah, he's awesome. Made another. Uh, we had a song from him. Was it the old man? Uh, yeah, the uh, yeah it Neil was, Young. Right. Oh. And now we've got uh, another memorable song and, <laughs> and video called Joe. Check this out. If it's ready. And it goes a little something like this. I just have one thing to say. Uh huh. Oh no. Hang on here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Where you going with that gun in your hand? You'll strip the rat from an American But leave it locked and loaded for the Taliban Hey Joe Where you going with that blood on your hands? Heard you say it, it was on the news You're the president, the buck stops with you Now there ain't no mommy and there ain't no dad Cause you wrapped them up in the American flag Thirteen kids but you stopped the war And there ain't no sense going back for more Cause hey Joe, we did it 81 million votes Joe, where you going? Why you moving so slow? They'll prop you up on the TV screen, but forget your job. What flavor ice cream is that? And hey, Joe, where you going? Do you even know? Here's the deal, the country's broke (laughs) Nice You ain't no leader and you ain't the boss You wander around like you're f***ing lost So check your watch, turn your back Set us up for the big attack Cause hey Joe, we did it 81 million votes Hey Joe so where you going with that gun in your hand? And hey, Joe, where you going with all that blood on your hands? Mm. Wow. That's good. I mean, that's no happy days. You know, it's no happy days. It, it, is, sure. it but, is far uh, from happy days. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, that, that was, that's a nice job. That is awesome, and it is about to be tweeted out at Pat Unleashed on Twitter.
Thanks for sharing that with us. That that's fantastic. Yeah, five times August. Super nice guy. Super talented guy. Yeah. I recently interviewed him for yeah. at the mic, and and that'll drop uh, in a few weeks. But he is. I mean, that's honest to goodness. So real talented. music, right He's there. So talented. Great stuff. It truly is. And really, He's using really his good. powers for good. <laughs> we appreciate it. Yep. Awesome. Uh, speaking of Joe and his efforts in Afghanistan that have been so good, uh, there's definitely blood on this guy's hands. Um, man, there's a video of a woman being beaten in the streets. Now they don't, it is disturbing because she's behind a car and you can see somebody is, is wailing on someone underneath right. them, but, uh, you don't see the actual, but this is really disturbing stuff. But here's what's going on right now in Afghanistan. <laughs> There you go. Uh, there it is. There's your uh, reformed Taliban. All right. Uh, that's enough probably of that. Um, that's your reformed Taliban. They're they're a diff- they're not the same. This no, is not your not. your big no, brother's Taliban. No. This is the new and improved yes. Taliban where okay, well, if we're going to beat a woman in the streets, we're going to put a truck in front of it so you don't actually right. see see the the blows landing on the woman. See how they are perceived wow. on the world stage. Right. They're, they care. Like, they care about that. Oh, is that the same Afghanistan that the Biden administration just sent $64 million in yeah. humanitarian yeah, that's, aid that's to? that's the one. Oh, they'll, they'll distribute that. Yeah, nicely. that'll be good. Yeah. Yeah, they'll make sure that gets to the hungry people in Afghanistan. $64 million, that's sure. That sounds like chump change. In it does. World. Well, it's, especially since we just left them $85 billion I know. I, I read that. I was like, we really instead of 64 million, I was like, yeah. It's lunch money. <laughs> what are you talking about sixty-four million? It is. <laughs> it is. Uh, meanwhile, here's what the world is saying about us after Biden's horrific withdrawal from Afghanistan. Oh, an American traveling in Brazil. Yeah, watch this. Check this out. It's the Statue of Liberty in Muslim gown. So, Bob, mm. translate translate what we're seeing right here. What does that say? It says over here is a failure of our civilization. The, the return of the Taliban to power in Afghanistan is an alert to the world of the explosive combination between politics and religion and proves that 20 years after this uh, September 11th, fundamentalism continues being a threat to humanity. Mm. This is what's in foreign countries. This is what they're saying. Mm. Mm. No, but he's going to restore uh, respect to the United States of America. Uh, he's going to bring us closer to our allies again, mm. and they're going to respect us and mm. love us and appreciate us again. When's Not like they did under that, uh, you know, that buffoon Trump. Uh, they're they're going to love us again, and our enemies, our enemies will fear us, and they won't dare step out of line. When does this start? When does <laughs> Oh, it's, what do you mean, when does this start? It's already on. I it's f- on like Donkey does, Kong right does not, now. does not feel that way at all. <laughs> not really? What do you mean? We've given him eight huh. months and, you know, <sighs> waiting for that. It couldn't be. I, I don't know that he could have done worse right. than he's done already. I, of course, every time you say that, something Yeah, careful. <laughs> I know. So be careful what you say because uh, <laughs> it usually becomes obsolete in about five minutes. <laughs> British military office officer, again, to, just to show you where our allies' heads are, uh, Biden is more of a danger to the West than the Taliban. Mm. That's right. Mm. Highly decorated British officer said he's absolutely shocked at Joe Biden's Af- Afghanistan withdrawal. Called the 20-year war total waste. 6,500 people died, 3,000 deaths at Twin Towers, and we didn't achieve a single thing. He destroyed 20 years of work in less than 24 hours. Yeah, I, in a way, that's true. I know. I was thinking about that, too. I mean, they, those for a number of years now, success has been, you know, a different outlook in Afghanistan, right? Mm-hmm. So we kind of changed that outlook a little bit. But, I, I mean, I, it did change the lives of Afghanis yeah. for 20 years. So there was that. Uh, but it yeah. is it is an absolute shame. In the Bob Woodward book, has said... This decision to just pull out and leave a complete vacuum with blatant disregard for how things were going to be was solely on Joe Biden. Got some tweets here. Uh, Bob, blah, blah. 
tweets, Gavin Newsom survived the recall election because all the Repo- Republican voters had already moved out of the state. <laughs> Fair yeah, point. That's probably true. Wes's antique vase. <laughs> it's already begun with the antique vase. <laughs> I'm just happy California is not coming to the SEC. <laughs> uh, Jeffy's third tale. Out tweeting already. Did you know that? Uh, yeah. You need to keep your third uh, tail under control. All your body parts right? that leave you and then uh, go off and uh, form Twitter, Twitter accounts. Account. <laughs> they all need to be restrained. <laughs> Jeffy's third tail, though, tweets, Nice how the abortion crowd uses the term pro-choice instead of pro-death. Mm. Eh? Uh-huh. All about how you word stuff. Mm. Dilapidated dinghy? Wow, that song. I hated the first lyrics because they're dreadful. Like <laughs> the Joe thing? Mm. Uh, locked and loaded for the Taliban. Dreadful, because it's perfectly written to tell the truth. Yeah, yeah. so good. Uh, really, really good. Jeffy's Meat Sweats tweets. <laughs> what is it with your body, man? <laughs> Tweeting. Well, he's got so much of it that when they break off, <laughs> oh, they're gosh. still big enough to uh-huh. you know, conduct a normal, productive life. What are you saying there? <laughs> he already said it. Oh, my bad. And they can't be productive, you know, when they're part of his body because uh-huh. he's not productive. Uh, but then they I can got break it. off. <laughs> look, Pat, look. <laughs> Jeffy's Meat Sweats, a Republican makes a political song and it's a tu- it's in tune and good. The woke makes songs of screeching out of tune, delusional, <laughs> dramatic lyrics that sound like a sack of puppies being run up, ran over. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very true. Very true. Indeed. And you know what else? It's, uh... All right. Well, speaking of a sack of puppies being right. run over, <laughs> right. how about this song? Wait. Oh, yeah, the song. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we're talking about the song, the Jeffy. Song. What'd you think we were talking it's about? about the song. A little defensive there, weren't you? <laughs> it's Wednesday. Which, of course, means it's time to chew the fat with Jeffy. <laughs> but first, okay, yeah, I mean, I can the crescendo. Okay, yeah. This never gets better. <laughs> you just, you, you hope it does, and it just... It doesn't. You hope that Corby, you know, finds the, the audio pot there and just breaks it off when it's in the down position. Really should. Uh, counting today, 47 <laughs> days until Halloween. Really? 72 days until Thanksgiving. 102 days until Christmas. Just a little... A little reminder, a little warning for you. Uh, also, a uh, rest in peace to uh, Norm Macdonald. Yeah, that's sad. Uh, very sad. 61 years old. Mm. Uh, apparently, he'd been battling cancer, and he kind of kept it uh, right. you know, under the wraps. Everybody didn't want anybody to feel worried about it. For nine years. Yeah. Wow, and, really? Uh, yeah, some of the oh, some of the pictures, some of the pictures that were you know released yesterday of the recent photos, you could tell that he was. Uh, you know, you could tell it was a whoa. He was wow, sick. He lost a lot of weight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really thin, but uh, really sad. Yeah, and I like Norm. I met him once. Um, you know, weird cat, but funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, I know Keith had. Uh, oh pulled yeah, pulled some, a couple clips here. Clips Let's go ahead and play the uh, Norm, the one with Conan. Just remember, you Norm. are making a movie with Carrot Top, right? I made a movie with Carrot Top. Okay. <laughs> But uh, what's the movie going to be called? Uh, I know what it's going to be called. Yeah, what's that? <laughs> if it's got Carrot Top in it, you know what a good name for it would be? What's that, Norm? Box Office Poison. <laughs> <laughs> There's this movie coming out. Yes. Title undetermined at this point. Chairman of the board. Oh, all right. Do something with that, you freak. <laughs> I bet the board is spelled B O R E D. <laughs> good. That's good. Uh, really funny. Yeah. Really that's funny. Good. Yeah. Got, anyway, it's sad to. Got a, you want know. to play one more? Sure. One more for the it's SBC. Roll. Watch this. And there's Charles Woodson. How about that? I want a season he had. All right. <laughs> Great, Manny. He became the first defensive player to win the Heisman Trophy. And congratulations, Charles. That is something that no one can ever take away from you. Unless you kill your wife and a waiter, in which case... Oh, thank you. I mean... In which case, it's good. Look at that. I mean, he was... He was fearless. That was awesome. Fearless. Although, 
I don't think even that removes no, it, your no, Heisman Trophy no, because not. I think OJ still, still, still has his Heisman. Already does, and he they should. never took that from him. He should. Yeah. He wasn't found guilty. Oh, he should. He wasn't found guilty. <laughs> oh, no. That is true. He was not That's found right. guilty. <sighs> of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Except in a civil trial. Well. Yeah. And they're after him again. Speaking of that, I mean. Are they? they oh, the, the family is pissed because he's paid uh, like $100,000 or 130000 or something to them. Yeah. And uh, they the, the he only, Ronald they, is so is he like, only owes them about twenty nine more than that million, more than that now thousand. yeah because of all the interest and everything that's occurring I mean, he's owed him I think wow. it's like seventy million now or something he, he's supposed to pay them mm-hmm. but he doesn't have it uh, well yeah yeah right he doesn't have it yeah well like, he doesn't I, have a job if he had it he'd pay, he'd pay him. him you know he would of course you, you know, know he know would, he would. <laughs> if you can't trust a double murderer who can you trust. No, wait. He was found uh, innocent uh, of that, you. right? So, okay. Thank you. Never mind. Accused. <laughs> Accused double murder. Right. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, so he's, uh, and that's what got him in trouble, what actually got him arrested, right? Because he went in to that Vegas room. He was after his merchandise that mm-hmm. he was selling because that's where he was making his cash so he didn't have to pay anybody any money. Right. Right. And obviously he had a gun, which, you know, mm-hmm. they... And it took advantage of. They did take advantage of. Made that. the charges a little yes, they did. Uh, yeah. stiffer. Yes. Yeah. yes and what, he did. spent what nine? Was it nine years? It's been a long time. It was I, a I don't long know the total. time. It felt like I felt like a long time for him to be in prison. For and that. let's not forget yeah. the day that he was released. Uh, there was that shooting in uh, Las Vegas. So right. That's that's. Oh wow. Just that that's was your, the that's same your timeline. Day. Jeez. Right? Wow. I know. Mm. They tried to make that as a conspiracy theory about that. Mm-hmm. Away from I don't have my pair uh, of <laughs> yeah. these yet, but uh, smart glasses by Facebook and Ray Ban. I don't have them yet. You're gonna get but those? I think so. All yeah, right. they're only 299 bucks. And what do they do? They're called Ray Ban Stories. You'll be able to find them, you know, pretty much anywhere that you get your Ray Bans. Uh, the frames feature two front-facing cameras for capturing video and photos, and they sync with a companion camera roll app mm. called Facebook View. So where clips can be edited and shared to other apps on your phone, not just Facebooks, and their physical button on the glasses for recording. Or you can just say, hey, Facebook, take a video. I'm sure that'll happen. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that'll happen Mm -hmm. instead of just going Mm -hmm. silently pushing the button. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm told, you know, I'm told there's a, you can see a light when you watch the video, you can see a light on the front of the glasses when you're recording, but it's kind of dim. Really doesn't. It's not overwhelming. You could probably just paint over that anyway. You put a little piece of tape over it or something. Okay, well, that's going to be a little bit more more obvious that way. Just a little piece of electrical tape will cover that up. No problem. And uh, it's, uh, they've got displays in the, the um, Ray-Bans don't have displays in the lenses. I know Snapchat has their spectacles out. You can't buy them yet, but they have displays in the, the windows. They have a tough time with those. People have a tough time disseminating real life and what's on the eyeglass screen mm. uh so mm. they're really you know i know they've struggled with that over the years but you'll be able to they say the glasses take about an hour to fully charge and the battery will last for roughly six hours with intermittent use so mm. maybe you get three hours maybe two with heavy use mm-hmm. if you're busy you know you never know what you're going to be recording and of course <laughs> Facebook says it's uh, nothing it's, good for the most part. You know that, right? Goodness. You're gonna <laughs> no. Yeah, it's all gonna I'm, be. Come on, Sting will be checking out the. Come on, man. No joke. No, I, I'm not joking. Come on, man. What? No, no joke. Oh. Yeah, family Look, get-togethers. Uh-huh. Yes, that's Those what people will record. Get together. Family get-togethers. <laughs> when picnics. you're out playing little toss games <laughs> yes. uh, on, with lawn you. darts and oh, whatnot. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Face, your, your app is going to be filled with little cornhole games. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Facebook <laughs> says its voice assistant only listens for that phrase and that it's functionally is limited to starting recordings so they're what not phrase? keeping Cornhole track games? of anything mm-hmm. what, what phrase are we talking about anything no facebook. we're talking about hey facebook oh, record, yeah, that record. One. That one. tonight will be the first uh, space flight with all civilians not Whoa. trained by nasa on board uh 802 mm-hmm. eastern is the time of the launch as long as it's not too cloudy or we don't have a weather report of clouds <laughs> rolling in. They're giving them a five 
five hour launch window, so it probably will take off. Huh. So they're sending a crew of four into low orbit, low Earth orbit. They're raising awareness for St. Jude's Children Research Hospital, and none of the crew has been in space before. Two uh, of the how long will they be? Yeah, there? how long? Three days. Oh wow! Three it's days. To orbit orbit the Earth three days. Oh wow! Do they have to control anything while they're up there? Yeah, I mean they're they have to control a couple of things. I think like hello. <laughs> you have to push Just the button to talk, talk. back. To I, I really the pilot, Facebook. They all have the, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, all right. They have to do that. Yes, the one guy, the head guy that's funding it is uh, the billionaire Jared Isaacman. You know the high school dropout mm-hmm. that started his uh, shift for payments company. That the uh, you know the payment processing company. So he's worth. Uh, I mean. He started at 16. He's worth two or three billion. You hear that, kids? School doesn't pay. Nice. I know. American dream right there, man. (laughs) Wow. So, I mean, it's a little bit more than the theme park rides from Blue Origin and uh, Virgin Galactic. So, how much is it? Safe travels. Well, these didn't pay. Like the they didn't like have he, to pay. Well, he's paying. Jared paid. Jared's footing the bill at a billion or something oh. dollars, and then he had uh, another guy, or another lady picked that's going to be a physician, and she's from St. Jude. She's had cancer when she was a kid. She's got a rod in her leg. She's going to be the first person with a prosthetic to go into space. And then two other, the two other people were picked. As part of a game, you know, a, a process that they advertised for during the Super Bowl. Hmm. You know, they just won. They won an event, That's and cool. the one guy was was picked because one of the people who won said, "Yeah, no, I'm not going to go. You go for me." No. Oh. So okay. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, that'd be yeah, awesome. I'd be. I'd go. I absolutely would. I'd absolutely me go. Too. If given the chance, heartbeat. that would be. Incredible. Now I'm not going to be able to because they have like roller coaster seating, and that's not fat guy seating <laughs> in those. There's no. That's the thing. It, it would it be too uh, claustrophobic. It in definitely there. would be. Mm, that. that might be. It definitely would be, be like spending three days in an MRI machine. Yes, which I couldn't do. No, thank you. <laughs> you'd be no. You'd be sitting in there getting ready for that launch window, going, uh, "I think uh-huh. I need to go now." Yeah, we need to c- c- blow, <laughs> call this thing off. Let's yes. open this up. I need to get out now. Now, give me a Star Trek situation where you got a room to spread out and walk around, and you're taking elevators to different parts of the ship. <laughs> yeah. I could do that. I could do that. As of right now, <laughs> it's not the Disney princess huh. that's going to be flying through space. Huh. Yeah, Weird. I know. All right. I know. So you can look forward to that in the in the future if you want. But you know. So remember the uh, iconic uh, Bansky moment in 2018 when the girl with the balloon piece that was sold at auction for 1.4 million dollars uh, and then self destructed the moment after the guy bought it, and mm-hmm. we all saw the we all saw the video. And I don't know that we actually have that video uh, for you today, but uh, we saw the video as the picture. You know went through the grinder uh, at the bottom of the frame. And uh, Bansky yeah. wrote that, uh, oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there, people just started freaking out, going, uh-huh. oh, my gosh. <laughs> and uh, he, Bansky wrote, some people think it didn't really shred. It did. Some people think the auction house were in on it. They weren't. And uh, <laughs> so, you know, the guy paid $1.4 million for it and the shredding event. So it's been, uh, now it's being displayed in London and Hong Kong and New York, and then it's going to go back to London for the guy who bought it for $1.4 million is now putting it up for auction in October, uh, a month from now, October 14th, for the partly shed where, how much are you willing to put out for it? Because yeah. <laughs> he paid $1.4 million. Yeah. They're saying they expect to get 5 to $8 million. Wow, oh, man. For it, I bet that's a little more. bit more than I'm willing to spend. What yeah. was your budget? I was, I was willing was to maybe jump in for two million. Well, yeah, yeah, well, two. Uh, yeah. yeah, two. You that's, could, you, that's about you, what I would put into it. You could start <laughs> the bidding. <laughs> two. <laughs> Started it. Two. <laughs> two million to the large gentleman. No, right. No, so, two dollars. Uh, uh, we don't have these. Uh, some of these videos. So we'll just sure? go with. Uh, I think we have them. Uh, okay, we'll which see. One? I know yesterday you talked about uh, AOC and her tax the rich uh, address, yes. yeah. uh, which is just sickening. And by the way, I didn't realize yesterday that event is thirty thousand dollars a uh, ticket. Uh, yeah, thirty five thousand. Thirty five thousand dollars per 000. ticket. Yes. and then you have the unmitigated gall. Thank you to wear a tax the My rich guys, tax dress. The and the, uh, right, rich. what a get out of here. Uh, Thank you. What 
It's sickening. I didn't know you modeled well. I didn't know you modeled well. Damn, that's because she doesn't. The hypocrisy. Is- oh, my God. Gosh, oh, it's eh. agonizing. And then, but my favorite part of that, uh-huh. and there mm. were plenty of other uh, agonizing parts of that. Mm. You know, De Blasio was there with his family, and mm. it was agonizing. Yeah, all these communists. Yes, mm-hmm. at a thirty-five thousand dollar per ticket. Did you yes. notice that? All and the- they have to. It's a. It's an invite. You have to be invited and then pay. If, if, I, I mean, when tour has to, then she okay. seats you where you want. And did you notice that all of these guests, none of them had masks on, but all the workers did. Everybody lining the walls, everybody holding up the yeah. dresses. Well, they've all been mm-hmm. vaccinated, so oh, you're oh, safe. Okay. It's fine. What, what's no, the problem? we've got to protect the vaccinated, don't we? I, I think we and they are. should have worn masks. That's why you're wearing a mask. Give me another drink. Okay? <laughs> Jeez. I know. Oh, it's agonizing. It sure is. But I did love the. Where did uh, she get thirty? I bet you didn't pay for her ticket. No, she doesn't way. have thirty five thousand no dollars to spend on something like that. Yeah, that was paid by somebody, or they gifted and, her, and or the, whatever. You know, mm. they didn't even they didn't even say how much the dress cost. They just talked about the designer. Saying, I'll bet you the dress the was another ten, to make fifteen thousand. Wanted to make a statement. Oh, oh wait, no, that, she mm-hmm. didn't pay for that. Oh, I've got to find it. it. Matt Walsh had the greatest tweet about her. But, and someone also, I said uh, side by side, who wore it better? They showed the the back of uh, AOC's dress and then mm-hmm. a Chick Fil A bag uh, next side by side, which was really funny because it looked <laughs> almost the same. Great. It looks almost oh, the same. So I great. wish I would have sent that I in. Love that. So really AOC funny. got a bunch of crap for that dress, and, and, and she and, should have. And, and she said, this "No, is this is odd. you know, it's a, it's a medium with a message, and it was an immigrant uh, designer." So Matt Walsh goes, "Immigrant immigrant designer. She's from Ontario." Kicked the doors yeah. open at the Met. That's what AOC had said. Uh, you walked around sipping cocktails and taking pictures. And uh, to her child care for all, quote, you That's support great. the direct murder of children. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. awesome. Sickening. Jeez. Our own representative. I still want to know who paid for her $35,000 mm-hmm. ticket because it wasn't her. I mean, she makes a lot of money, but not, no way, not that, that kind of money. No way. 888 More Pack Ray Unleashed coming up. Welcome. Great to have you with us. 888 Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Uh, Anthony Fauci making the rounds again for some reason. Ugh. Gosh, no, I guess he's never stopped. He no. just slows down every once in a while. Catches his breath and in, then he's back on every single show. That Well, he's got some gain of function tests to go over. <laughs> gain of function tests. Right. To lie about. Right. <laughs> yeah. So that's important. He was on MSNBC with Caddy K. I love Caddy K. Who, who doesn't love right Caddy K? Oh, Caddy K. You can't get enough of that. <laughs> I was interviewed once by Patty Cake over on CNN, really? but not Caddy K. K. No, I've never had Caddy K. <laughs> oh. So oh, that's cool. Yeah, Patty Cake was really pretty good. Pretty good host over there. All right, well, yeah. yeah. But Caddy K. But Caddy K. Oof. I mean, when Caddy K has Anthony Fauci on, mm-hmm. you right. know it's a winning combination. And uh, it was. They were talking about travel passports. Now, Caddy K had some issues. Yeah. She's got some problems she, with what's going on right now. She's from Britain. Yes. And uh, yeah, this is interesting and here. Here's what she had to say. How do we know that the responded. virus travels when people move around the country? Mm-hmm. Don Bear, the Democratic congressman so wait, from Virginia, the um, virus has a bill travels proposing that people, move? people traveling yeah. within the United Is that right? States. Yes. Is that Apparently, what Caddy K is saying? Yeah. The virus it's, moves. It's almost like the virus has a host. Really? You know, and doesn't travel <laughs> on its people own. People move around. Doesn't buy its That's own plane weird. tickets and stuff. It only moves <laughs> yeah. around okay. in restaurants when it sees somebody walking in. Oh, yeah, yes. when they're walking. It's the only right. time. But uh, sorry, shoots right ahead. over your head when you're sorry. seated. All right, go ahead. <clears throat> States on airplanes and trains should either be vaccinated or provide proof of a negative COVID test. This is very common practice now mm. in Europe. I've just been traveling oh, all over Europe. Pause it for a <laughs> Right? Oh, if it's common practice in Europe. It is. Well, in Europe, it's very common for them to have to show their passport in Europe. Yeah, I don't give a rat's ass what Europe is doing. Wow. Okay, that's why we left that crappy continent in the first place and, and came here. And it's not every country, by the way. The European <sighs> Union is, uh, they're it. trying to make it every country. And there's a few that are backing off on that. Yeah, I don't care if it's every country in Europe. I don't care if every country in Europe, <laughs> Africa, Asia, <laughs> Australia, <laughs> South America, Central America, and Mexico. Really? All do it. That doesn't mean we should okay, do it. Okay, Mr. Nationalist. I know. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. All right, go ahead. 
going all over Europe. You can't get on a plane without having some kind of proof that you're negative. It seems to me crazy that a year and a half into seems this, to her crazy. you can still, I can still go on a plane half. to Boston or California and nobody's going <laughs> to check That's not, me. oh it's my like, God, that, that is crazy. It's almost like we have freedom in this country. <laughs> Oh, that's preposterous. It's preposterous. I find it outrageous that we don't have to show our papers to travel in this country. Papers, please. That's what I hear in Europe. In Europe, in they Europe. have papers, please. In Europe. In Europe, they've got concentration camps. Why are we doing that here? In Europe. All right, let's see what the rest of this, uh, how it goes. Well, that's on the consideration, certainly. Oh, I mean, I, I have been asked good. that question. Right, and good, actually good. Got, that's... got some play in the press when I made the answer. I think that, in fact, it is seriously considered. It's on the table. We're not there uh, yet. Wow. In fact, if you look at the six-point I mean, program that close. the president came out yeah. with a couple of days, what we were talking about with travel was doubling the fines of people who, in fact, are traveling and don't get mm. tested. Okay. And, oh, I, good. and I believe good. that yeah, the good. idea about the idea, requiring no vaccination idea. for travel mm-hmm. is something that is on the table for discussion. Yeah. It has not been decided yet. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, that, that makes me feel so much better. We just haven't reached that point. Remember no. the whiteboard We're timeline? There. We're getting there. Stop rushing oh, yeah. it, Caddy K. We'll get there. They're yeah. just not ready for it yet. It just it takes a little bit longer in this country, Caddy, because we have something called a constitution. Plus, they're not going to need to really have that to travel in the U.S. since they're requiring everyone to be vaccinated as it is. Yeah. I mean, so you won't you need the passport. You want to have a job, you're going to have to have You won't need the passport to travel because you're going to be vaccinated anyway. Yeah. I know. Yeah, well, <sighs> 60% of Americans uh, support the Biden mandate. Sixty uh, percent. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah. we're almost oh. ready there. Is that why it says Dr. in this giant 60%. black bold headline? <laughs> nearly sixty percent of Americans support Biden's vaccine mandates, according to a poll. Sixty percent. Crazy. That's so. We're almost there. That is, Caddy. Madness. Just just be patient, and then we'll. Caddy, just wait a wait a few more months, and we'll have it done in this country as well. Okay. Over there. Over there. <laughs> it's actually, to be specific, 58% of Americans say they support companies with at least 100 okay. employees mandating the vaccine or requiring unvaccinated employees to get tested weekly, compared to just 36% who said the opposite. I mean, this... You are kidding me. We yeah. have just, we've lost our identity. We've, we, we've lost our will. We've lost our core in this country. We can't even agree on freedom anymore. Liberty. Choice. This is something that they're supposed to be all about, is choice, right? Right. <sighs> my you... body, my choice, blah, 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 blah. Why well, not when it affects me? Okay, you don't mind a 100% death rate of aborted children. You don't mind that at all with your body, your choice nonsense. But if you've got a 1% chance of dying, then, oh my gosh, you've got to be protected from that. Yeah, and, and, and wow, folks like Fauci and AOC and all of these elites that are running the show, you know, they they want us segregated. They see a vaxxed and an unvaxxed society. Two Americas, mm-hmm. John Edwards, right? Mm-hmm. Two Americas. It's actually going to be three Americas because the third America is the elites like them who don't play by either of these rules and they don't care and they go to the Met and they go to these events and they don't they don't wear they masks. Laugh at us. They laugh at us every chance they get. They're yeah. not wearing masks. You believe these lemmings? Yeah. <laughs> Let's they, see what else we can get they, them to do. Yeah. They don't care uh, about awesome. they don't care about vaccination status. And we, I mean, we even see. I, I mean, I know it's Joe Biden and he's an idiot, but we see him all the time doing the mask thing wrong. He wears his mask when he's away from people. When he goes up to talk to people, he takes it off. It's supposed to be just the opposite, you doofus. Mm-hmm. The point of wearing a mask is so you're not spreading the germs when you're in that close proximity to other humans. Is that he, the he point? Because I, I, I didn't just know don't what understand. the point was. Really? The well, that's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. Okay. So now you freaking know. Now I know. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. For that because I welcome. thought I thought it was pointless you're to welcome. wear the mask, frankly. Really, it is. But yeah, quite frankly, yeah, that's what is. I thought. So but, yeah, well, you thought wrong. because you recall <laughs> Justin Trudeau said uh, when you're speaking moistly, remember that? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't when speak, you speak moistly. moistly. 
Uh, so they can't, can't do that. Oh, by the way, Canada has a chance, and they'll probably fail the way California did. I believe their uh, election is Monday coming up for Trudeau. Uh, really? You know how they do that stupid thing where they call elections? Yeah, they called for one. no sense. Or was it yeah. scheduled in yeah. advance? He called yes. it. Uh, yes. so I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it. He called it? Don't explain it to me because huh. I don't care. I yeah, just know right. the election's Monday. Right. Okay. <laughs> By the way, the support for mandates climbed further when asked about health care workers, even when they didn't get an opt out with weekly testing. 60% said they supported the measure, almost double the 34% who were opposed. And then, of course, you got the 6% with, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I Uh, I don't know. If ever there's a time you should probably know how you feel about things, (laughs) it's right now in history. Yes. Oh, gosh. You would think it would elicit some sort of opinion in your head. And there. I don't know. I I don't know. And we have companies that are saying now, you know, well, sure, you've got that whole religious exemption thing, but you know what? Don't come to work anymore. Mm. I know you want that whole right. religious exemption. Remember, thing. Make right. them- no problem, no yeah. problem. You got it. Just well, don't here's come the problem. To work anymore. They've already come up with the excuse that there is no major religion mm-hmm. that has any problem with the vaccine. Okay, I can't. So, <sighs> uh, don't forget, as we learned on this program earlier this week, mm-hmm. make them terminate you. Do not right. just quit. Make them right. terminate so you can bring wrongful termination lawsuit later. Speaking of lawsuits. This Biden mandate, this is going to be tied up in court for so long mm. that it, it, it don't yeah, but rush it. Time, you don't have, uh, if you don't want the vaccine you know. and you're being pressured right now, uh-huh. don't rush out and get it because the courts are going to buy you some time if nothing else. And they know that, but by the time that happens, you know, most of these people will have gone out and gotten it. So it'll be right. it'll be a moot point almost. It'll opinion. be a moo point. Yeah, moo point. Yeah, moo Come point. on, man. Get mm-hmm. it right. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so this, uh, you mentioned mandates. Oh, yeah, I did. The president's got some strong feelings. Oh, no. He does? <laughs> yeah, he's got <coughs> some powerful, <laughs> powerful emotions really? about mm. thoughts and feelings on the mandate. <laughs> you remember back in time. Freedom then was not a crime. Then COVID came along, an excuse to take control. We took what you gave us, two weeks goes in, to 18 months and counting. It's probably 19 now. Trying just to flatten the curve. Then I get the nerve, I see opportunity. I never realized. How easy this would be, a mandate <laughs> Where your mask can get faxed, cause I said so <laughs> Or I'll lock you away, a mandate <laughs> Where your mask and get faxed, cause I said so Or I'll lock you away, a mandate Sounds like he got that's, a little breathless there at the end. That's, that's almost beautiful, lost though, Joe. Yeah. Isn't beautiful. that pretty? Yeah. And you, feel, you can see that he feels strongly about it. You just sort of sense it, don't you? You do. Yeah. You so do. that's a beautiful effort uh, on his part. <clears throat> Thank goodness for I mean, it's for an effort. President. <laughs> um, an exasperated Anthony Fauci is debunking some claims here. Is he? Uh, he was on... What was he on? Was he on CNN. with uh, Jake Tapper. Tapper? Yeah, I think, I think so. he's on talking he's with Tapper. He's making the rounds. Yeah, he, he really Nicki is. Nicki Minaj tweeted yesterday that she's not vaccinated. She's doing mm-hmm. her own research. And then she shared an anecdote I found rather unbelievable, to be honest, Did about you? alleged side effects that her oh. cousin's friend supposedly experienced in Trinidad. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't normally even ask you about this, but, but Nicki Minaj has mm-hmm. nearly 180 million followers <laughs> wow. on Twitter and Instagram combined. She's beloved by her fans. She's a huge mm-hmm. talent, obviously. Her tweet obviously. was seized upon by vaccine <laughs> opponents as some sort of <laughs> evidence. Like you know, <laughs> I-, I want you to address what she said, because for anyone out there who has mm-hmm. any questions about this, Dr. Fauci, Pause is it for there a second. any evidence? Like people are turning to Nicki Minaj for any information <laughs> on on this vaccine and by the way, she- or the pandemic, if you're too stupid to figure this out, okay? If you're if you're following Nicki Minaj and her advice for your health, I am. Then I'm sorry. 
I can't help you. Okay. <laughs> By the way, all she's saying Can, is she's giving these stories which they're getting to. But yes. the whole point of her stories is make your own choice. Yeah. Point. Uh, right. Choose that, for yourself. That is true. True point. That is true. And that's what Americans will do. And we're smarter than this. They they give us so little credit for it. Like they've got to cover up what Nicki Minaj says about her cousin's friend's male right. man's uh, right. dog. <laughs> right. Whatever the hell happened here. Wait, what happened to the we dog? We can't. It died. It no, died. It died. what? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it you died. gotta break it. it. Yeah. Come on, I'm man. So, the dog's not feeling well. Oh, what? Is it died. Okay. Oh, it died. Yeah. No, they vaxxed okay. the dog though. Yeah. Oh, we're getting there. <laughs> They've already been we talking are. about that. So. Well, they have. They have vaxxed. Animals sure. already. Apes oh, that's right. in that's zoos. Right. That's right. Yeah, the gorillas, dogs. Have, the gorillas have tested positive for COVID. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lions, tigers, bears. bears? Oh, my. Oh, my. Uh, all right. Let's see the, <laughs> the response to this brilliant question from Tapper. Okay. What happened to this guy? Sheesh. Dr. Fauci, is there any evidence He's that the Pfizer, the Moderna, or the J&J <laughs> vaccines Never ending, cause guy. any reproductive <laughs> issues in men or women? Glenn, that question. Yes. The answer to that, uh, Jake, is a resounding no. No. A resounding no. There's no evidence no. that it happens, nor is there any mechanistic okay. reason to imagine that it would happen. Pause it for a second. So really? All right. So, so, Dr. Fauci, let me ask you a follow-up question. How do you know that Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend didn't have Thank swollen you. testicles? Have you felt them yourself? I don't think so. Unless, I don't know, have you been to Trinidad and Tobago mm-hmm. and hung out with Nicki Minaj's cousin's friends and got mm-hmm. a little intimate with him? Wow. I don't know. Did you? Wow. Well, how do you know he doesn't have swollen testicles? And if, that, and if that's the case, we don't know that the, it was <sighs> the vax that caused those swollen testicles. But right. <laughs> we, how many... How many stories did we hear about women and their time of the month, the menstrual yeah. cycle, all messed up because of the vaccine? And did not, weren't there doctors who were backing that up, saying that their patients... That they had patients with struggling, yeah. They, their patients were struggling with this. Now, he denies all of it. Well, you know what? I can categorically say no to all of that, Jake. Can you? How? Yeah. The guy hasn't been a practicing physician for some something like 40 years. So what are you talking about? Every, you don't have any idea. Every drug has their uh, list of possible side effects. So you're telling me that the vaccine... And they have to list them. The vaccines if, don't have this list of side effects? If there is any chance of people coming up with a, a test person came up with, they've got to list it on the ad, which is why... 50 seconds of every 60 second commercial are what can happen to you from the side effects. Even if it's the most remote of possibilities, which is why they have to say, or maybe even sudden death because it's happened. Right. But with this vaccine, they discount all of that. And in fact, we have a series of videos today. I don't know if we'll get to them of people who would definitely disagree with Tony Fauci as to what the vaccine has done to them and their loved ones. Dang. Wow. It's frustrating, isn't it? Yes. It's frustrating. It's frustrating that I didn't <sighs> have the problem that he had in Trinidad, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Wait. Um, no, I'm no. not even going to explore no, that. No, and uh, Keith, no. I suggest you don't either. <laughs> we're good. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'll explain it if no, you no, want. No, no, we're good. Uh, let me tell you about something new from Tommy John. It's called <laughs> Apollo, and it's, their, uh, it's Tommy John's newest and most advanced men's underwear. Love it. With performance-grade, dry-release fabric blend that's exclusive to Tommy John. It's Tommy John's latest comfort innovation, and you can't get it anywhere else. Apollo Men's Underwear is proven to keep you drier and up to 7 degrees cooler than regular cotton underwear. Fantastic. That's why Tommy John doesn't have customers. They have fanatics. When you try these on and you realize how comfortable they are and that they don't ride up and that they, they really do what they claim they're going to do then you just become an evangelist for the company apollo underwear is soft supportive stretches for the perfect fit every day and it's available in sizes up to 4xl so not quite jeffy size but um they'll fit just about anybody else (laughs) short of jeffy these things are going to fit you they got a size for you really yeah what's yours eight 12 xl what what is it 12 xl Mm -hmm. that's a nice ring to it there's a number of uh, Olympic numbers on oh, okay. my size. All right. Olympic yeah. <laughs> numbers. What? L1V. Niner. Tommy <laughs> okay. John's new Apollo men's underwear. It's uh, high end for your rear end. 
That's how you can think of it. And you can't get them anywhere else. Right now, get 20% off your first order at 20% off your first order at TommyJohn.com slash Unleashed. Go to TommyJohn.com slash Unleashed and get 20% off. That's interesting. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting. Is. It's interesting. Huh. Oh, by the way, you know, as we talk about all of these uh, pandemic things, scientists are now saying, hey, there's no... We don't have any evidence that a booster shot is A, necessary, B, effective. Well... We don't know. They don't know, Jeffy. What they're what they're saying don't give me is that. Whoa. what they're saying Whoa. is um, first of all before we start do talking about America, <laughs> the United States getting <laughs> the booster shot. Right. We need to make sure that the rest of the world gets their first shots. <laughs> okay. Well, um, it's not the way it's supposed to work. You take care of yourself so that you're alive and around. I am sick of hearing you so say that. So that you can take care of everybody else. Once you got yourself settled, then you reach out. Yeah, but in this America case, I, I, I want everyone to get. Yeah, get make it sure first. every far corner of the world <laughs> yeah. gets theirs first. And and don't forget this. Uh, to your point, Pat, the two FDA officials who butt heads with the Biden administration, they quit. They're done. They're saying we don't need these boosters. And so right, goodbye. yeah, you, it's to that point. Where people are, you know, are actually having a wave of conscience and saying, I, I, I can't be a part of this because this is messed up. We don't even know what this is going to do to people. So welcome. I know. Uh, we got that going I know. Us. And I wish if people were going to quit, I wish General Milley would quit. Uh, I know that this has nothing to do with the vaccine, but it was reported yesterday that he called China twice, twice <laughs> and told them that he would let them know. If we were going to attack if them, Trump was, I mean, yeah. that's treason. Yes, that's treason. Yes. Why that man, if it's true yeah. and they haven't denied it, I haven't seen anybody rushing to his defense. Right. If that's true, that's treason. Yes. Court, he should be a uh, court, court martial drug out of office and you bet at the very least stoned in town square. Oh, it's the only it's the only punishment that's actually spelled out in the U.S. Constitution for a for a crime. And it's uh it's death. Yeah. Death for treason. So, I don't know. How, do that with what? Do with that what you will. Not information. Because they're not going to. They, no, they, even know. if it's true and it's proven and it's beyond a shadow of a doubt that that happened and you can prove it with, back it up with two witnesses, uh, they still wouldn't. They, they still wouldn't charge them with treason. I'll bet you they wouldn't. No, because they, they because don't they were trying to we cover up. They were trying to say that it was a promise to do treason Acts, right, he didn't actually mm. do it, Jeez, so they could, you know they can get him off. The wow, thing. I know. Okay, I know. He split hairs on that. All right. Uh, by the way, uh, Joe Biden has lied about something else, uh, and this is so stupid. Earlier this week, he said something about um, uh, t- he trying to get a job at an Idaho lumber company. Yeah, <laughs> what? Yeah, that was his I, first job. I wanted to, my first job. I wanted to. Go to Idaho and work for (laughs) Boise Cascade. (laughs) I'm like, what? Uh, They even they were even like. So Boise Cascade said, uh, "No, (laughs) we don't have any record of that. That didn't happen." (laughs) I'm sure what he's talking about. But how about no? In every state, this guy has to have some sort of made up story where he's involved in your, like in Alabama. Um. I was a poor sharecropper's son. Oh, really? No joke. I'm not joking. Here? And my dad said, my dad said to me, Joey, uh-huh, Joey, when you work for a share of those crops, you won't leave. Most people don't. So maybe you better stop. And I said, wait, what? And then I forget what he said after that. And that was in Alabama? But that was in Alabama. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now, did yeah. you... When did I was you, a poor sharecropper. Yeah, did you so. pick peaches in Georgia or, or apply to do that? No, but I, I've eaten a peach. You've eaten a peach. In oh, well, every then city in Georgia. Is that every in city? Jo- every, I went on tour, a peach-eating tour <laughs> with not, Jimmy Carter okay. back in 1976. Well, his, thing, his thing was peanuts, though. So, Yeah, but oh, we ate Georgia peaches. peaches. 
Yeah, Georgia I know. peaches. Okay, so yeah. There was that. Now, were you also a <laughs> ski lift operator in Stop asking me questions, Vail, Colorado? Keith. I don't have time for this. Or did that job fall through? And it I wasn't that long time. ago where he said he was in Pittsburgh for the shooting. Yeah, the, the, right. The, the, mm-hmm. right. The, the synagogue was like, um, yeah. no. <laughs> right. My dad said, Joey, Joey, don't let Keith keep asking you things when a network break is coming up. Okay, okay. Okay. That's what he said. Joey, uh-huh. but wait. tell Keith to shut up. Did you used to yes. paint the Golden Gate Bridge? Shut up. Like that was your job? I painted it the rust color it is right now. Uh-huh. Yeah. I painted that back in the day. By the way, when was the last time you had something that was the most delicious thing of that particular nature? It's been a while. Ever. It's been a while. Yeah. Well, it's been since the last time you had Kexi cookies. Right, that's what I, Those are the you. best thing in that category on this planet our whole fall lineup is uh mostly new but we still have you know the the tried and true chocolate chip and uh when else do we keep salted caramel the salted caramel i think is there we well we've got a we've got a caramel apple one for fall that's, that's really great, really but good i'm talking about the specific yes, i know you are one i know there. and you don't want anything bougie like apples <laughs> Uh, plus pumpkin spice because you, you have, have to. That. That's you a, have that's to. A law. Yeah. My favorite thing, though, maybe ever that Jackie's made with these cookies is the cinnamon roll really cookie. Really good. Oh, Had one the other day. So awesome. Good. So kexi.com if you'd like to try that. Best cookies on the planet. Kexi.com. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. We've got Gregory Wrightstone who wrote the book An Inconvenient Inconvenient Facts. Mm-hmm. Yes. He's going to be in here to talk about uh, the climate change situation, what's going on. Uh, He's a big proponent of it, I hear. Yeah, of climate change? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thinks we should spend trillions more to fix a problem that's kind of not there. Weird. Yeah. Uh, four in ten young people fear having children due to the climate crisis. They're doing such an effective they job. They sure are. Fear-mongering that uh, kids are are just scared to death. First of all, they think they have no future because the world's going to end in 10 years or nine years, whatever we're down to now. And I, <laughs> nobody knows. I guess it came from some IPCC IPCC thing that really didn't happen. The report, yeah. The IPCC didn't has never said the world is in danger of cataclysmic events or it's going to end or there's extinction down the road in 12 years. They've never said that. Plus, they always, all of these reports, whether they, if they give you time, all say, if nothing if, happens, yeah, if, yeah. we could die tomorrow. Well, yeah, no kidding. Right. I mean, no kidding. Yes. Uh, but it's... It's working, right? It, it's despicable what they're doing to our kids. It is working, yes. They're scared out of their minds. And that's why they're insisting, you know, you got... What's her face? Van Cleave or whatever her name is. Van Cleave. Greta Van Cleave. She's changed her name. That's what she calls herself now. Greta Van Cleave. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, she's out of her mind with the hysterics <laughs> yes. and is insisting that, you know, we stop driving cars and having industry and making money and eating because uh, <laughs> the world is going to explode yeah. in a few years. It's Can we stop? And they do this on purpose. There was the uh, the thing the other day with the with the pandemic where the doctor said we've got to make this uh, a bigger emergency. We got to be scarier in our language. Right. We got to right. tell them that okay, if you don't get the vaccine, you are going to die. You know you're going to die. Okay, really? Well, that's the exact same thing they're doing yes. on the climate. Yes. And it's working on the kids. They don't have the experience. They just they believe these reports, and they're not. True. Well, and they're being hammered at school too. I mean, they holy are. Holy cow! The teachers are yeah. all about it. Absolutely. Uh, this is kind of cool, though. Lab-grown woolly mammoths yeah. could walk the earth in six years. That's not cool, man. If geneticists, uh, new startups, he's really su- trying. succeeds. Yeah, he's been after it for a while. But I think that's cool. Yeah, he hasn't had any it's money. It's probably not a good idea to no. mess with Mother Nature, but uh, ah, and, they're going and, to mix and, it with elephants. It'll be fine. Okay, Don't worry get, about it. And what is the noble cause to bring back woolly mammoths, Jeffy? Well, they mm. claim because they want to uh, help with climate change. Woolly woolly <laughs> mammoths yeah, they, can help with climate they're change. Gonna, they're going to bring them back, what? and that has that will help. Do with they the, soak up some of the carbon? In the, oh. in the, up up on the, in the permafrost, <laughs> and it'll save the permafrost from melting so fast. 
What? I don't understand. How? I don't Nobody know. Nobody knows, man. I don't know. Nobody I knows. I think that this guy is using mm. some of the climate change language to finally get some money. Mm. Because he talked in there how Smart. for years he's talked about doing this, but he never had any money. Mm. And now they've created, he's got a couple of investors and he's got you know millions now instead of you know hundreds of thousands. And so he said, now that he's got these millions and they're going to start up, we've always joked around about being able to do it in six years now that I have the money. Yeah, we could probably do it in six years. <laughs> so we don't even know if he can do it. But he's got mm. money now. So uh, I kind of feel like he's playing into the climate change game to get money to try to do it. That's interesting. All right. Well, so if these revived woolly mammoths eventually repopulate the Arctic, they would take down small trees and help repopulate the grasses they thrive on. Those grasses <laughs> reflect sunlight better than the dark trunks of the conifer trees okay. that live there. In addition, oh, the woolly mammoths yeah. tamp down the snow making it uh, less insulating. Those okay. grasses would cool the ecosystem, in turn reducing the release of trapped methane gas from melting go. permafrost. Okay. Wait, trapped what? Um, a major contributor glo- to uh, yeah. global warming. Uh-huh. If that methane gets released, it's 30 times worse than carbon dioxide per molecule Okay. in terms of its ability to cause global warming. All so right. there, uh, that's why the woolly mammoth will. Yeah. Uh- <laughs> and if a woolly mammoth is good, I say a Tyrannosaurus Rex Absolutely. is even better. I mean, that they're ta- talking they about they said down not snow. long ago, they said mm. not long ago, right, that uh, Musk Company could... Could be uh, could be Jurassic Parking in in six or seven years too. Really, wow. Uh, we're messing with stuff that uh, should not be messed with. Yeah, like uh, coronavirus. But it's still kind of cool, you know. I know. It's still kind of cool. Uh, plus, get ready for the left's uh, climate change emergency lockdowns. Oh, op-ed from New York Post here. Biden claims recent hurricanes prove. The recent hurricanes prove. prove they've completely dropped the. Hey, don't confuse weather with climate. <laughs> That's long gone. One's long term, and the other is just what's going on today. <laughs> don't confuse weather with climate. <clears throat> Shut up. They uh, now it's fine to confuse weather oh, with climate. Yeah. Every single weather event means cl- climate change. Yep. So these recent hurricanes prove we're in a climate crisis. <laughs> Where were you in 2009, 10, 11, 12, I don't 2013, remember. Were there 14, then? 15? I don't remember. I yeah, don't remember. There, there were some storms. There were no hurricanes. No huh. major, not a single for 12 years. Not a single major hurricane made landfall in the United States of America. Now, Weird. when it happens, and you know it's normal, every single time it's a climate crisis. God, I can't take it. It's code red for the world, he says. <laughs> White House climate advisor Gina McCarthy adds that climate is now a health emergency. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Buckle it's convenient up. for politicians to treat every hurricane, tornado, and flood as an apocalyptic sign from Gaia and then blame political apostates for offending the goddess. Uh, But it's an irrational way to think about the world because our solution is, in most ways, quantifiable, better than before on nearly every front. So, in other words, you know, uh, hurricanes claim less lives now than they ever have. Uh, Even though we're in the way of hurricanes much more than we used to be. Yes. Right? We've built yes. along the coast. Yes. Because we've, cause we've we created can. infrastructure that costs, you know, the damage is huge right. when, when it makes <clears throat> landfall. But life li- goes on. I mean, exactly. well, it's amazing. This latest exactly. Ida came through there. I was, in, I was amazed that, you know, that, that first day the reports were like one guy. What? Really? That's it? That's, I mean, that's incredible. It is incredible. Uh, we'll talk with Gregory Wrightstone about all this coming up in a minute. First, let me tell you about Rough Greens. I've uh, been talking about Rough Greens for for quite a while now. This is a powder that you sprinkle over your dog's dead food. This is the living food that you can put on top of it. Um, with that simple act, you're providing your dog with essential vitamins and minerals and probiotics and omega oils. Uh, and dogs love this stuff. Um, as I've mentioned, my dog wouldn't eat her food without, unless Rough Greens was on top of it. She just uh, 
turned up her nose and walked away if rough greens went. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot to put the rough greens. Find out if your dog is like this. We'll send you a free bag so you can try it out for yourself. Uh, well, your your dog can try it out. All you have to pay for is shipping. Go to roughgreens.com. That's R-U-F-F greens.com or call 833-ROUGH-DOG. This is Pat Gray Unleashed. Joined now by Gregory Wrightstone. We've talked to him multiple times about uh, climate change and the inconvenient facts. And uh, how's, how are things going? Oh, really good. Busy. Good. In Fort Worth to give a talk on, uh, talk is entitled Global Warming, the Cold Hard Facts. So I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna set these people straight about what's really going on. What is really going on? Because all we hear from Biden and the administration is how dire it is, what a crisis we're in, that these hurricanes are proof of... Climate change? It's proof of climate change hysteria is what it is. And it's what we look at, they're using every single, whether it's a condo collapse, a hurricane, it's perfectly, we're in the middle of hurricane season, the peak of hurricane season, hurricanes happen at this time. Uh, And if we look at, actually, by almost every metric we look at, the Earth's ecosystems are thriving and prospering and improving. It's completely opposite. And humanity and the human condition are improving because of, get this, it's the combination of global warming. We are warming. Mm -hmm. It's a combination. We've been warming for more than 300 years. And the first 250 years of that was naturally driven. But we're being told, oh, yeah, but that all changed in the middle of the 20th century. Now it's being driven by the demon molecule CO2. So this warming combined with increasing CO2 is leading to an Earth and its ecosystems that are prospering. Again, by just mm. almost every metric you look at, uh, crop growth, life expectancy, uh, pollution. If you look at the EPA results, uh, we've our pollution has, has been declining, and it's declining year after year after year. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's not what you'll hear. You hear <laughs> dire predictions of, of increasing pollution leading to death and disease and pestilence and nasty population. Yeah, but we have uh, droughts in some parts of the country and <laughs> terrible flooding in other parts. Right. Yeah. So exactly. well, there's I, proof right there. I, I just I was I testified last week in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, against they're trying to do this carbon tax up there. And the and this is funny. This is a, it's emblematic of what they're doing. Their justifications for this carbon tax is number one. Increasing precipitation uh, from global warming, man-made global warming. That was number one. Number two, let me see if you can guess. Oh, no, I know. What is it? It's got to be droughts. Exactly. Droughts. Exactly. You yeah. can't have both. All right. Just pick one. They always do this. They, they always do. take both sides. Whatever right. is convenient for them. Exactly. No matter what happens... They say, see, we predicted it. It's, uh, the, it's too <laughs> and much. And they predicted nothing. <laughs> exactly. Every prediction they've made based on these climate models have been wrong. Yeah, the UN just released a report this week uh, reporting there'll be 200 million climate refugees coming up. Oh, my gosh. So, but wow. the, what's funny, in 2005, the UN had a, a report where they predicted 50 million climate refugees by 2010. Uh and they listed the most at-risk islands, and they were the Seychelles, the Bahamas, the Maldives, and the others. Well, I went back and looked. In 2010, of course, there, were not, there weren't any 50 million climate refugees. I looked at the population of those most at-risk islands and found the population's been booming. People have been flocking to these <laughs> island paradises. They're not fleeing from them. And, and look at the Maldives, oh, the most at-risk island. Right now, there are 17 resort complexes, seaside resort complexes being constructed in the Maldives. And Mm. you know they're being funded by equity companies. And more importantly, they're being insured by large insurance companies. Insurance companies avoid plague Mm. like the, or avoid risk like the plague. Mm -hmm. If they thought there was any chance that these resorts would be underwater, they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be insuring or funding. Right. And, And the apostles that push this stuff never, their actions never match what they say, flying all over the never. world. Obama and they never have to account for it. Right. Obama building on the coast, uh, mm. Al Gore's, you know, energy use or or whatever's happening. Yeah. You know, I get I was on the Uber ride over here, the guy was asking me, Why are they doing it if they're lying to us? Mm. And you know, why are they? I 
I can provide the science, the facts, the data that says they're lying to you. This is what they're telling you. And this is what the science tells us. And uh, what I'm going to do, uh, what I like to do is point out those really big misconceptions, particularly fires in the West. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what, all- is the mis- what, what is the misconception on fires? Because they tell us that those are uh, bigger and more intense and they're everywhere and they're much worse than, it, than well, ever before. They are bigger and more intense, and it's because of man's actions, but it has nothing to do with climate change. Right. Uh, but actually, the area burned in the United States is about 20 or 25 percent of what it was back in the 20s, 30s, mm, and right. 40s. It's, less. it's much less today. But each fire is more intense, and some of these are some of the largest fires ever, and that's forest mismanagement. Uh, these things, according to the Sierra Nevada Conservancy, there are four to five times too many trees per acre. acre. It's easy to understand what does that mean. There's more fuel, say, have bigger, more intense fires. But the other thing you don't think about, the great second greatest soil moisture loss, the first is eva- evaporation, of course, the second greatest soil moisture loss is the soil sucked or the moisture sucked out of the, the soil trees. by the trees. Yes. So now you got four to five times mm. too many trees wow. competing for the same scarce soil moisture, wow. so it's adding to the aridity. You don't think about that. And we stopped logging. It used to be when a fire broke out, they could get down those, they could take their equipment, go up these logging roads that were throughout the forest, and they could take the equipment right to it. They're all grown up. The only way to get people in there is to, is to airdrop them now. So there's just so many things. And then there's the rise of the invasive species across the West. Uh, a thing called cheatgrass is really, it's not been talked about much, uh, but that it's grasses that are just dry kindling that uh, the, the terrible fire in California is going right on right now. It's really not a forest fire. It's a grass fire and it consumed two mm. towns. It wow. was this cheat grass that we're talking about. We're talking to Gregory Wrightstone, author of Inconvenient Facts, uh, latest op-ed, electric vehicles, fire catastrophe. It's not a matter of if, but when. Uh, what's what's going on with the uh, electric uh, vehicles scares me to death mm. these uh, these lithium ion batteries are very unstable they're very mm. uh, these cars combust spontaneously really uh, and like the teslas and not so I mean, much they're the, just like little, not teslas they're just well like there AAA are AAA batteries greg what are you talking uh, about no, no. <laughs> lithium is a highly unstable it's it's a it's an alkali alkali metal just like sodium but it's highly unstable uh, the Teslas have ignited, uh, mostly the Chevy Volts and some of the others, uh, and it's the electric buses. There were two large bus stations. There was a bus station in China and one in Germany where an electric bus at night, 2 a.m., 3 a.m. in the morning, it just caught on fire, Ugh. and you can't put these fires out. Right. Uh, you just can't do it. And for a number, you wow. just have to let them burn out. So the bus stations were consumed. Um, there are now towns in Bavaria banning electric vehicles from parking garages think about this scenario i hate to say it's going to happen when an electric vehicle in an underground parking garage underneath a large office building or a uh, an apartment building think about that with thousands of people above you Mm mm-hmm and it, and it ignites. And you can't put it out. You can't put it out. We've seen evidence of that. I mean, and we've seen and, plenty of videos. And the of fumes that. are are toxic. Ext- yeah. Not just to- I mean, it's really, really, really bad. Yeah. I just read a paper. They say that, that actually in an enclosed area, the fumes might even be worse than the heat. Uh, but Jeez. the entire think about that. You can't even if you got to it and the fire department get you couldn't put it out. So now you're under in an underground parking garage. Yeah. yeah, it just. Mm. And, and now, why do you hate fossil fuels? Is what I want to know. <laughs> well, let me ask why you this. Do you hate fossil let me fuels? ask you. This. Here's here's a good here's a test for you. Uh-huh. So you're in New Orleans. Hurricane Ida's bearing down on you, and your wife says, "says Pat, we need to get out of here." And you've got a you've got a Tesla with a full charge in your garage, and you've got a two t- 2010 Ford Taurus with a full tank of gas. <laughs> which one do you take? Which, which one are you taking? <laughs> if you hop in the Tesla, uh-huh. now bear in mind. You can't run the air conditioner because right. it's just going to suck suck electric from that battery. You bet. You're going to be moving eight ten miles an hour if you're lucky, heading heading north. Uh-huh. You're not going to make it halfway to Baton Rouge before you run out. You need a charge, right? And it's you know that that Taurus, or if you're in, in Minnesota or Colorado mm-hmm. in February and get caught in a snowstorm. Mm-hmm. Well, number one, you can't run the electric heater. It's two degrees. The wind's blowing. The snow's around you. Yeah, that uh, battery's not going to last. It's not going to last. Nor, and if you're if you're in, again in that Ford Taurus, 
you can sit there and wait for somebody to come get you and idle it and have the heater on and you're not going to freeze to death. Mm-hmm. But if you're now at an electric vehicle, you're going to be going to that next gasoline power vehicle that's next to you that's stuck in the please let me in i you know yeah. <laughs> yeah so wasn't california recently just said by 2035 you're gonna have to exclusively sell electric, electric vehicles, vehicles in our state where do you see this heading with all these mandates and biden wants electric charging stations all over the nation they're doing 500,000 of them on yeah. our money on yeah. taxpayer dime yeah, right now, electric vehicles just aren't selling very much. So right now, it comprise less than 1% of well, sales. Well, they're going to make it, though. I mean, they're going to make it. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that's. To. I think that's going to change. It just does not it make it. It, yeah. it. it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense for long-term transportation, maybe going to and from home to work if you're not going too far. There's some advantages, and I, I really like them. I, I love Teslas. They're, the pickup on, mm-hmm. on them is just unbelievable. And they've got some really cool technology in these, but they're just not practical. No, they're not. Uh, until you can charge something in five minutes or the time it takes you to fill up your gas tank, most people are not going to want them. Exactly. I just drove from Tampa to Arlington, Virginia, and it was a horrendous 19-hour drive. That would have taken me about at least four or five days if you're an electric vehicle oh, yeah. you, got, right. you got a you got plan nothing better to do stop Greg. And charge it overnight <laughs> and, uh, uh, uh. and stop again and then another 150 or 200 miles and yeah. charge it again just, just doesn't make sense it doesn't I, it I, really yeah, doesn't i just and, yeah because i mean we are a society that, that can't even be bothered for five seconds to look up from our phones we're gonna build right. our lifestyle around charging stations exactly. yeah probably not and probably the other, not the other thing we're going to talk, talk a lot about is the china situation that these these are called critical elements, critical minerals, cobalt, lithium, uh, mm. the rare earth yeah. el- minerals that are eighty percent of them are processed in China. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we're beholden now to China. Mm-hmm. He what he wants to do is turn us away. We just became energy independent from Saudi Arabia and the Middle East for our oil, and he wants to change that now to a dependence on China for all of our electricity supplies. And it's they can turn that off. And they've done it before. It'll be fine. <laughs> It'll be fine. And you mentioned rare earth. Uh, I loved. I just want to celebrate another day of living. Uh, it was a great band. Rare earth was awesome back in the day. Anyway, uh, Gregory, where do we? How do we combat this? Because it just seems like no matter what is said by the other side, you're just trampled. Uh, it is. So how do you how do you deal with this insanity? Yeah. Uh, we're pushing back. I'm an executive director of the CO2 Coalition, and we've got 70 plus of the top scientists in the world. We're using science, facts, and data to dispute this information. And you still have your uh, your app? Yeah, we got. Yeah, okay. I rolled that out two years ago on the Glenn Beck show. If you remember, mm-hmm. I do remember. And he, Glenn loves the app. It's it's, it's free. Yeah. I've turned it free. It's mm-hmm. inconvenient facts. Go get it. It's got sixty facts that you. you and have. it's available again on Apple, right? It is. Yeah, yeah. you got it back on there. Yeah, we got it back That's up. Good. Now, the key is also what to get into the schools. Yes. Yeah, yeah we're we're actually the CO two coalition is going through an education initiative. We're doing some. Uh, they're, they're, we're, we're design- Are they allowing you in schools? No, no, that's <laughs> Good. the problem. Yeah. yeah, well, what we're doing? We, How do we help you get in there? Well, we're gonna, we've we've pretty much accepted that we're <clears throat> probably not going to get in the public schools at this point, that's and incredible. that we're sort of targeting the homeschool crowd. Unreal. Maybe parochial, private schools. So we're developing lesson plans. Yeah, using Good. science, and we're we're developing children's books that are actually pretty cool. Huh. Uh, and it's uh, uh, they're, they're they're really kind of some neat stuff that we're doing. Where do people go for more information on all your stuff? Uh, go to the co two coalition dot org. Co two coalition dot org. We'll yes. tweet that out as okay. well. Okay. Yeah. All right, Gregory. Great, uh, great stuff. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thanks Thank for you so all, much. all the work you do. Thank uh, you. Because it's agonizing hearing this stuff every day from the administration. They are really pushing yes, it, jamming are. it down America's throat. All right, we will uh, see you tomorrow again right here on Pat Gray Unleashed. Gray, only on the Blaze Radio Network.